Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. If you've ever attended any of my courses or webinars or even these videos on YouTube, you know that I'm a big fan of the Jupyter Notebook. I can write lots of code. I can say def hello name return hello name. And then I can run it, right? Hello world. And it works just fine. But what if I want to document this for other people? What if I want my Jupyter Notebook page, not just to be a one-time thing that I'm playing with, but something that will stick around, that I can pass around to other people, maybe even students in my classes. Well, what I could do is say, you know, I can document my function here. This is a very friendly function. And that will certainly work. And that's because this cell here contains Python code, and a hash mark begins a Python comment. But there's a better way to do it, and I want to show that to you in this video. And that better way is Markdown. Now, if you've never heard of Markdown, well, I'm going to teach it to you because it's really, really simple and it's very powerful. The idea behind Markdown is you should be able to use plain text to create nice formatting. You shouldn't have to learn HTML. You shouldn't have to learn all sorts of fancy, tricky things. Just use plain old text with a few little tiny changes. Well, first of all, how do you use it inside of Jupyter? Well, if you go up to the cell menu, you'll see that the cell type can be code, markdown, or raw and be convert. We're only going to worry about code and markdown right now. And by default, every cell is a code cell. But if you go over to the beginning of the cell and you choose cell markdown, now it will no longer contain Python code. And indeed, if I say here x equals 100, you'll see that it's no longer highlighted as Python code. Now, I can go back to that if I want. I can use y and that'll become code. And you'll see the in over here on the left to show that it's code. But if I make it M over here, now it's Markdown. Well, okay, well now what? Well, Markdown typically is just used to write text. So this, you know, is a sentence. And you could say, oops, and you could say that it's a very long sentence. So long that it goes on and on, actually, it's more of a paragraph, but the paragraph is far too long. Okay, I think I've done enough there. When I execute this cell with shift enter, it doesn't actually execute code. It now becomes text, and it's text that I marked up with, well, we'll mark down. So far, not so exciting, right? I know, you're just saying, well, this is text. And by the way, um, if I want to go back and edit, I can just click here or double click here, and it becomes the regular old text again. Well, let's say that I want to give this a headline. So I can say here, pound key, hash key, and you see that it's already formatted slightly differently. This is a headline. And now when I execute it, you'll see that indeed the headline appears there at the beginning. Now, the more hash marks you use, the more hash characters you use, the smaller the headline, right? And so we can say here, you know, this is a subhead. This is some more text under the subhead. Here, and I'll just like, you can spell subhead either way. I'm going to forgive myself for that. And so you can see how you can actually build up some nice text here. So if I want to document my function, one way is to use Python comment, but I can also just create a new markdown cell up here, and I can say, you know, uh, function hello. And then I can say here, this is a great sample function, which I use in many of my courses to indicate how Python does all sorts of things. And sure enough, now whoever loads up my Jupyter Notebook will see not just my brilliant, brilliant code, but also, also my brilliant prose. And you can move around Markdown uh, cells just like you can move around any other cell in Jupyter. Okay, but what if you want to do something a little fancier? For example, you might want to have boldface or italics. Easier said than done. Okay, not exactly. But if you use two stars here, it becomes bold. And if you use one star, it becomes italic. Ta-da! So all you have to do is use two stars or one star around whatever you want to boldface or italicize, and it's done. And when you execute the cell, it becomes formatted the way that you want it. So that covers most of what you're going to probably want to do with Markdown most of the time. But I have a few additional needs that I usually use. For example, let's say I want to say here where I could use this function. For example, this function can be used. And now I'm going to use a numbered list at parties, at weddings, at dance festivals. By the way, if you use this function in any of these places, you're going to be a little weird, so don't do that. 
And look at that. Now we have a numbered list. And by the way, if I want to have a sublist, I can do that too. I just go in a little bit. One birthday parties. And we can say, I don't know what other kinds of parties. Um, you know, graduation parties. And now you see that it automatically figures out how to number things accordingly. So I used one, two, three, and then in my sublist I used one and two. It figured out how to number it. What if I don't want to use numbers at all? What if I just want to have bulleted lists? We can do that too. Right, bullets? We can do that. And now I'll just use here minus and minus and minus. And here I'll also use minus and minus. And look at that. Now it uses different kinds of bullets as necessary also really really nice and straightforward and you can have as much or as little markdown in a given cell as you want a few other little things I want to show you first of all let's say I'm going to include some Python code here like what I do a lot of times in my courses is I'll say here's and well let's just say here there's a markdown you know exercise you know try this and I'll then explain what I want people to do one write a function two get the output from the function and then three you know, print the output on the screen. And then I can say here, here's an example. And then I'm going to show some Python code. And I can say here, well, I have two options. One is I can indent it. You know, print, I'll say x equals f of y. And I'll say print x. So if I do that, you'll see that it's all in monospace. This is the way we typically write programming code. But what if I want to make it a little fancier? What if I wanted to actually um, use highlighting? I can say, backticks Python and then backticks and look at that now it's not only indented and monospaced but it also uses the color coding conventions or the color conventions of Jupiter pretty pretty snazzy well we are in a web browser wouldn't it be nice for us to actually have some sort of like uh, links in here well I can do that of course I can say here you know, here are some links so we can say here I like Python and say here, python.org. Notice what I've done. In square brackets, I've put what I want to be in the link, and in the parentheses, I've put the actual link. And it is a great language. And now when I execute this cell, look what happens. It shows the text that I had in square brackets, but the link is actually to python.org, which is what I wanted. And if I go back here, I can edit it some more. What if I want to have an image? I can do that too. I can say here, exclamation point. I'm going to copy this from over here. Right, and now I can say here, right, and that's going to show me, uh, it should show me. All right, let's try this again. I may not have to do a square brackets, I always get this wrong. Nah, okay. All right, let me just look this up briefly. Oh, it has to be inside of, there we go, there we go, there we go. Sorry, it needs both parts there. So we need to have here, you know, Python logo. And then that'll be in round parentheses. There we go. There we go. Sometimes it's a little hard to get this syntax exactly right. So you can have images, you can have links, you can have lists, you can have headlines. There are more things that you can do with Markdown, but this is a pretty, pretty good proportion of what you can do. Where can you go to learn more about Markdown? Well, my favorite guide is actually here at markdownguide.org. And then they have basic syntax there. And in fact, I can even use Markdown to show this to you. So the markdown guide is at, I'll just use parentheses there. Oh, there we go. That's it. <laughs> Showing once again my uh, familiarity with this. There we go. And then you could just link to there. All right, so I hope that you will start to use markdown in your Jupyter notebooks. I have recently been using it more and more to document things and produce exercises and other explanations for my students, and it has gone over really well. Uh, if you have any other comments or questions, be sure to be in touch with me via email or on Twitter, and I'll be back soon with more tips and hints about Python.